Hey, this is BK Hobby, and today I have a song off S31 Smart Socket with Energy Monitoring. These are fairly new and they're fairly cheap, and as with most Sonoff products, they're pretty easy to flash with an open source firmware like Tasmoda, ESP Easy, or any of the other programs out there. So today I'm going to show you how to flash one of these with Tasmoda, configure it, and connect it to your OpenHAB home automation system. The box is nice, it tells me what's in the box, the Wi-Fi smart socket, a quick start guide, but the smartphone is not included. I wonder if the house is included though. Hmm. And here's the actual plug. I really love the fact that it's narrow this way, which means that you can stack two of these top to bottom in a regular US outlet. Also has a manual switch on the side and two LEDs that show you Wi-Fi and power status. The really cool thing about these is that they also have energy monitoring so you can measure the voltage and the current power draw from the load connected to the socket side. So everyone knows Sonoff has been really great about making products that not only work with their smart home apps that they develop, but they also make these easy to hack. The same goes for this plug. Basically this plug is put together in such a way that it's easy to take apart, take the board out, attach the FTDI connector and get it reflashed. There's no glue holding the pieces together. So in order to take it apart, all you have to do is find the gap between this gray piece and the white housing, snap it off. Once you've snapped that off, you just slide these two rails off. And that uncovers three Phillips screws that you simply need to take out to take this entire unit apart. Once you take the last screw out, you can simply slide the cover off and you've got access to the boards. If you look at the actual board with the ESP chip on it, they've actually made it very easy for us to flash the chip. There's these six pins right here to which you attach headers or wires and flash the chip with. And best of all, they're even conveniently marked for us. So looking at the board with the plug in its natural upright position, from the top, the pins go VCC, RX, TX, and then the last pin is the ground pin. So we really only care about the VCC, RX, TX, and ground pins to connect to our FTDI interface. And then we have the power switch which is hooked up to GPIO 0 and allows us to put the ESP chip into flash mode. So here's my FTDI chip with the four wires I need to attach to the Sonoff ESP board and basically they're just DuPont wires with one side of the header pins cut off so that I can use just a bare wire to attach to the pads here. So I'll start by putting this board in a device and I'll put a dab of solder on each of the four pins that I'll be attaching to. Okay, so as you see, I've added some solder onto the pins I'll be using for connection. And now I'll simply go down the line and attach the wires that I have hooked up to my FTDI. The VCC pin on my FTDI goes to the VCC pin on the Sonoff. The RX pin will go to my TX pin on the FTDI. The TX pin will go to the RX pin on the FTDI. And the ground pin will go to ground. Okay, so now that I have these hooked up together, I'm going to take the board out of the vise just because I don't want to put any weight on the wires hanging off the board. And now very carefully I will attach those wires to the FTDI again. Okay, now with the FTDI connected to my ESP chip, I'm going to plug in the USB on this end first. And then while holding the power push button in, I'm going to plug it into my computer. Okay, so now we're ready to flash. And the first thing I need to do is download the flash utility. In this case, we're going to use the ESP Easy flash utility, the ESP flasher tool. So we'll go to the ESP Easy GitHub repository, and I'll leave the link for it in the, in the video description. And then we'll click on releases, and I'll just download the zip file of the latest release. Once that finishes downloading, I've extracted the zip file and I opened up the directory. So the tool that we actually need out of this entire package is the Flash ESP8266 application. 
But before we open that up, we need to download the Tasmoda firmware file first and put it in the same directory. So then we'll go to the Sonoff Tasmoda GitHub repository. I'll also leave the link to this one in, in the video description. And again, we'll go to the release link and download the binary file for the latest release. And there's many different binary files available in each release for things like other languages or specific configurations. But the one I will use is the basic sonoff.bin file. So I'll click on that to download. And again, once it downloads, I'll copy it out of the downloads directory and place it into my previously downloaded ESP Easy firmware directory. Okay, now that I have the flasher tool and the binary file for the Sonoff, double click this Flash ESP8266 application and select the proper COM port. In my case, the FTDI shows up on COM7 and then select the firmware. And once you click on this selection box, you'll be able to select that Sonoff.bin file. Now all you need to do is hit Flash and just wait for the binary file to upload. You should notice the FTDI blinking rapidly while that's happening. Okay, so it tells me the flash completed. And I know things are good because the blue LED on the song off is now flashing, which means that it's ready for me to connect to it and apply the song off configuration file. So first, I'm going to disconnect it from my computer. And I will disconnect the wires that we soldered to it earlier. Okay, so first, before I plug this thing in, I'm going to put it back together so I don't work around AC voltages with the thing wide open. So just snap it back in, put the three screws in and tighten them, slide these covers back onto the rails, and pop this gray cover back on with the push button. Make sure the button works and we're done. Okay, so now we just need to plug the sawn off into an available outlet. And again, you'll see the Blue LED is blinking. And now go into your phone's Wi Fi settings and search for the Sonoff's access point. So I'm going to click on that one. It's going to pop open the web page on the Sonoff. And here I can just scan for the Wi Fi networks and connect to my Wi Fi. So let's do that right now. And if you did everything correctly, when the device restarts, you should no longer see its Wi Fi access point in your phone's Wi Fi configuration. But now we need to find the IP address for the device on our LAN and connect to it to finish the configuration. For me the easiest way is to go into my router configuration and find out what new client connected and go through it that way. For you that may differ so I'll skip that part and I'll assume you have found the new Sonoff client on your network. Okay so once you have found your Sonoff S31's IP address you just type it into your browser and it will open up this basic configuration web page. But right now, the firmware thinks that we have a Sonoff basic module, and in fact, we have a Sonoff S31. So we need to finish that configuration first. So click on configuration, click on configure module, and here for the module type, right now it says Sonoff basic, we need to select Sonoff S31. The Tasmoda firmware already has a pre-configured template for our device. So all we need to do is select it, hit save, and now the device will restart with the new configuration. And once it does, we have this new web page here showing the Sonoff S31 module and also showing us some energy monitoring statistics like voltage, current, and power. Also, when we click the toggle button here, the actual device relay clicked and we see that that state is now on including the fact that the red LED is also on now. So I'll click that back off. So now we still have some configuration left to do. So we'll click on the configuration menu item. And we've already configured Wi-Fi. So the next step we need to do is configure our Mosquito client. This is how we're going to connect the Sonoff S31 module to our OpenHAB home automation system using MQTT. So I'll click on configure Mosquito and I'll need to type in the host name. So for me, that's just the IP of the Raspberry Pi that's running the Mosquito Broker. Port doesn't change. Client user, you can change to your Mosquito Broker configuration. And the next important thing to change is the topic. So the default topic is just sewn off. But if you have more than one device, you obviously need to make that a different topic ID. So I'll just name my topic sewn off S31-1 and hit save. And the device again will restart. 
and we're done. So now the next part is adding the mosquito topic configuration to OpenHab so that we can control device and check its status from our OpenHab home animation system. The only thing we really need to do is add the switch item for the Sonoff. So I add a new item called switch. I named it the same way I named my topic in the device configuration. And in this case, just as an, as an example, I'm using the Sonoff to control my Christmas tree lights. So I labeled it as the Christmas tree, added it to the first floor family room and the Christmas lights groups. So when I turn on my Christmas lights group, the Christmas tree turns on with those. I added a switchable tag so that I can use Google Home to control the switch. For example, I can tell Google to turn on the Christmas tree and then I need to complete the binding configuration. Now I'm still using the Mosquito version 1 binding so that's why you see a OpenHab version 1 binding configuration item here, MQTT equals. On the output side, I'm using the CMND slash Sonoff S31-1 topic slash power. The way Tasmoda works out of the box is it defines a CMND topic for the command and a stat topic for the status. For the command side, it's just CMND slash the topic ID that we selected slash power. And for the input side, it's stat slash the topic ID we selected slash uppercase power. And that's it. Once I have this configured, I hit save. The item will get added. And then we can use it in our sitemap, hat panel, or rules. So let me show you a little demo using my Christmas tree. Turn off the Christmas tree. Turn on the Christmas tree. Okay, so as you see, configuring these devices with Tasmoda is pretty simple and adding them to OpenHab for control is even simpler. The fact that these devices are so cheap and extensible with Tasmoda makes them a great choice for any home automation system. And the fact that they provide device level energy usage information is an added bonus. I hope you found this video useful and interesting. And if you want to see more videos like this, please go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. Also join the Discord server, for which I'll leave the link in the video description. And as always, thank you for watching my channel and my videos. Until next time, this is BK Hobby. Thank you.